So it's been just over four months. So really four months and two weeks since the RTX lineup launched and we're still waiting for a lot of things to come to fruition. We do have Battlefield with Ray Tracing and we have Port Royal Benchmark, but we've had DLSS with Final Fantasy 15. So far that's about it. But as of yesterday, the time of the video, so February 4th, DLSS was introduced to the Port Royal Benchmark. And at the same time, NVIDIA claimed that it was coming very, very soon to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which we're still waiting on the shadows, and Battlefield Five, as well as Metro Exodus, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. So hopefully we'll see all these things rather soon, much, much sooner rather than later. But what we can do today is kind of take a look across the RTX cards and see how much they do benefit from DLSS with ray tracing enabled, so in Port Royal. So what we did was we took the 2060, 2070, 2080, 2080 Ti, all Founders Edition cards, and we ran them through the Port Royal benchmark. Now the DLSS section is a feature set, so it's separate from the regular benchmark. So I wasn't able to get like a score, but what we were able to track is the average frame rates from each one and see what kind of benefit that we got from the settings. Now, what I wanted to test other than just the, the ray tracing enabled and then ray tracing with DLSS was I wanted to test without DLS, not without DLS, yeah, without DLSS, but also without DXR. You can do a custom run of Port Royal where you disable real-time reflections and real-time Sh uh, shadows. So we did disable those for the one run. So you're going to see three results for each card. You're going to see DX, like full ray tracing, a rasterized, that's where it's listed as rasterized, so it's traditional rasterization for the reflections, screen space reflections, and the soft shadows. Then you're going to see the result from the ray tracing, real time ray tracing with DLSS and we're gonna see the benefit ac across those. So this was done on our Z370 test bench with an i5-8600K at five gigahertz with 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz, and all coming off of a crucial P1 NVMe drive. So let's get things started with the first results, which are simply the baseline scores. So all of the cards run with ray tracing enabled. And what we see across here is, of course, the RTX 2060. Now, before we keep going too further, I want to reiterate that this is all at 1440p. So the benchmark runs at 1440p, and the results are frame rates in this benchmark at 1440p. So the 2060 gets 17.9, the 2070 at 22.54. Things move up a good bit to the 2080 at 28.15 FPS, and the 2080 Ti is a staggering 37.41 FPS. Now I know what everybody's thinking, those numbers are super crazy low, not impressive, take it home, we don't want to see it. But you got to remember when these new tests come out, remember when Time Spy first came out? If you can remember back and you were in the game back when Firestrike came out, I had a GTX 660 and a, an HD 7950 at the time and that benchmark just beat the daylights out of those cards. So looking at what cards now are able to do, you got to remember this is first iteration of this particular benchmark. So yeah, that is what it is. But what about when you introduce rasterized results in here? So moving things over, you take away the real-time ray tracing, the real-time sh ray trace shadows, and the 2060 goes up to 22.15 FPS, 2070 up to 26.8, 2080 to 33.98, and the 2080 up to 43.36. Now, I just say all this to said that before to reiterate this is a very intense benchmark, and it is a it's optimized for ray tracing. So this is going to be, yeah, this should be a pretty good example of kind of a better case scenario for it. So what happens when we enable DLSS on top of the ray trace? How does that compare to the rasterized performance versus the real-time ray tracing performance? Well, you can see here that the results are pretty staggering. So the 2060 goes up to 2633 and the 2070 goes up to 3296 and the 20 
2080 goes up to 40.1 roughly, and the 2080 Ti goes up to 52.9 FPS. Now if you notice, what you're seeing really is the lower tier card is matching the higher tier card's rasterized performance with real-time ray tracing and DLS enabled. So the 2060 is performing where the rasterized 2070 was, so it's pretty impressive to see what it can do. Now we all do know that it is rendering a lower resolution and then filtering it so that it matches the higher resolution image. So ultimately giving you better performance. So it's one of these things that it's really hard to convey in a video versus seeing it in person. But the rebuilt image is actually really good. At least in this scenario, it was in the Infiltrator demo and it did have some issues in Final Fantasy 15. But with the upcoming for Battlefield 5, Metro Exodus, Anthem is supposed to be getting it, even though that game is not going to be in our test suite thanks to the hardware lockout. So we're not going to be able to test that one. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we will test that one. So when they do come along, we'll do those and we'll try to find a good way to do the image quality test so that you can see it side by side. But that's kind of where we stand with DLSS right now. Really, really frustrating not to see it in more titles yet, but... I'm really hoping that in the coming weeks, they're planning on starting to roll it out pretty hardcore. Still a lot of games waiting for it. Still a lot of games that said it was going to get it that still hasn't gotten it. would love to get an update on those. But I'm going to leave you guys with a side-by-side -side comparison of ray tracing and then ray tracing with DLSS. But it's going to be at 1080p running on the 2080 Ti just because our capture card caps out at 1080p. That's the only reason I want to make sure it's an unfiltered just output. Either way, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss you guys in the next one.